I am very pleased that our speaker today is such an impressive figure, a distinguished attorney, longtime judge, now Michigan Supreme Court Justice, whose stellar professional accomplishments are matched by his dedication to public and community service, which should, after all, be the hallmark of every member of our profession. We are very honored to have with us today the Michigan Supreme Court Justice Brian K. Zara. Justice Zara received his undergraduate degree from Wayne State University. To finance his education, he opened and operated a small retail store in downtown Detroit, later opening a grocery outlet also in Detroit with two partners. He then graduated with honors from the University of Detroit Law School, where he was a member of the Law Review. While in law school, he also served as articles editor of the State Bar of Michigan's Corporation and Finance Business Law Journal. Justice Zara then served as law clerk to Judge Lawrence P. Koff of the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Michigan, one of our graduates, before joining the leading law firm of Dickinson Wright. Following private practice, Justice Zara served as a very well-respected Wayne County Circuit Court judge appointed by Governor John Engler and then elected, followed by his appointment to the Michigan Court of Appeals, again appointed by Governor Engler and then elected, followed by his current position on the Michigan Supreme Court, appointed by Governor Rick Snyder and then elected. Justice Zara's impressive judicial career is matched by an equally impressive record of civic leadership. He has been active in the Boys and Girls Club of Southeastern Michigan, Kiwanis, Leadership Detroit, Knights of Columbus, the Maltese American Benevolent Society, and the Federalist Society, among many others. His public service is equally exemplary. He served on the Michigan Civil Jury Instructions Committee, the Circuit Court Appellate Rules Committee, Domestic Violence Legislation Implementation Task Force. He has also served on the Michigan Board of Law Examiners, which drafts and grades the examination that law school graduates must pass in order to become licensed attorneys in Michigan. In fact, his expertise and continuing leadership for the court on bar exam issues is one of the reasons that I invited Justice Zara to speak to you today. We all know that the celebration of a law school graduation is tempered by the grim reality that for most graduates, another major hurdle lies ahead, with the festivities of today actually marking a very short respite of a day or two between law school exams behind you and studying for a bar exam ahead. So who better for your speaker than a distinguished civic leader and Supreme Court justice who just happens to know more about the next big step in your lives than almost anyone else. Please join me in welcoming Justice Brian Zara. Well, thank you very much. Before I begin, Michael, our graduate who sang the national anthem, I want you to know wherever you are, you gave me goosebumps. It was really a wonderful rendition. Thank you. Look up, everyone, just look up. What do you see? Championship banners, Big Ten championships, Final Fours, national championships. In 25 years, what will your banner say? Dean Howarth, members of the Board of Trustees, distinguished faculty and alumni, parents and students, 
I'm truly honored to join you in this celebration today. I have no doubt that today will be a day you will never forget. I recall my law school graduation as if it was yesterday. My mother was reminiscing about all the frustration I caused her as a child and an adolescent. And then she gave me a big hug and she said, Brian, I didn't see this day coming. <laughs> I'm sure some of the parents up there can relate to my mother's feelings. As my mom was hugging me, I knew that the decision to go to law school was the best decision I ever made. And I'm sure many of you today know that going to law school, no, no let me correct that, going to the, the Michigan State University College of Law is the best decision you ever made. Of course, as noted by the dean, the next step in completing your education is taking the bar exam. Go ahead, boo. It's okay. Let it out. You may be interested to learn that Dean Howarth and I have had some serious conversations about the content and the process of the exam. I have to say, we have some really serious disagreement over some significant issues. For example, I believe the essay exam should be shorter. The dean thinks we should make it a little longer. I want to reduce the number of subjects covered on the exam while she thinks we should increase the number of subjects. And I want to lower the cut score, but Dean Howarth believes we should keep it right where it is. I'm afraid to look back. Is the dean laughing or is she ready to kill me? <laughs> All kidding aside, Dean Howarth has led the deans of the five Michigan law schools in a constructive dialogue with the Michigan Supreme Court. Together, we want to ensure that the bar exam is an accurate reflection of your knowledge and abilities. On behalf of the court, I want to thank Dean Howarth for her contribution to the process. Of course, the Dean's job is very different from mine at the Supreme Court where we oversee the Board of Law Examiners. The Dean's job is to make sure the legal education provided here at MSU prepares you for the practice of law. And an integral step in this process is preparing you to pass the bar exam and be admitted to the bar. Our job at the Supreme Court and the Board of Law Examiners is to protect the public and make sure that lawyers who pass the exam have at least a basic mastery of the skills needed to be admitted to the bar. This said, I have one piece of valuable advice regarding the essay portion of the bar exam. This advice will help you to be a great lawyer as well. Here it is. There is nothing, and I mean nothing, more important than being able to write clearly and concisely with compelling language and a direct style. So, as you prepare, don't forget that knowledge of the law is only part of the answer. Your success in presenting technical knowledge and displaying analytical skills is dependent on your ability to write. It's just that simple. But today is not about the bar exam. Look up at those banners again and note what you do not see. You do not see the date the university was founded or the date the university entered the Big Ten. While graduating from law school and passing the bar exam are significant accomplishments, these accomplishments are but the foundation to your future and what you make of it. And so I ask you again, in 25 years, what will your banner say? Here's the audience participation portion of my remarks. I'd like each of you to look at the graduate nearest to you and imagine what that person will be doing in 25 years. Go ahead, look. I see the chuckles. Will she or he be a judge, a justice, a member of Congress, 
perhaps a governor or a senator? I recognize that most of you will not pursue a career in public service, but you can, and all of you should be public servants. Each of you can and must contribute to society in a meaningful way. Indeed, as members of this great profession, we have an obligation to make this world a better place, not just for our own families, but for our community. I make you this promise. You will never regret a decision to give back. You will never regret coaching Little League or Pee Wee Hockey. You will never regret doing pro bono work for a law clinic or a nonprofit. You will never regret mentoring an inexperienced newer lawyer. There are few things in life for which there are no regrets, and giving back is one of them. My message to you is simple. Whatever path you choose, be a champion for the law. Because by becoming a lawyer, you are joining the profession that is essential to the greatest government in the history of the world. But make no mistake, with this privilege comes great responsibility. You will have to work hard. You will have to sacrifice. You will have to commit to the needs of your clients over your own. But two key responsibilities come before anything else civility and integrity. What you say and do not just reflects not just upon you, but upon the entire legal profession. Remember always that even if your cause is right, you have no excuse to be rude or insulting. Even if your cause is right, you have no excuse for not playing by the rules. Even if your cause is right, you have no right to demean or be nasty, whether through email, Facebook, Twitter, or in legal pleadings. It says a lot about the times in which we live that when someone calls for civility, these calls are met with, dis with a dismissive shrug or even mockery. Somehow, the culture has come to equate manners with pretension and civility with elitism. We all learn the golden rule in kindergarten, and it applies here as well. Treat others as you want to be treated. Regarding integrity, treat it as your most valuable asset. Integrity is to a lawyer as capital is to an entrepreneur. But unlike capital, integrity lost is not easily replaced. You stand tall, and proud today, you're filled with integrity. Your job is not simply to preserve your integrity. Your responsibility is to invest in it. Build upon your good integrity so that you honor our profession. And above all, cherish your integrity. Because should you ever lose it, you will have a very difficult time earning it back. Finally, let me leave you with this thought. To the whole world, your clients are just people. But to your clients, their cases are the whole world. And you are the key to making things right. You are their champion. That's why being a lawyer is so rewarding and so challenging. So make the most of the career in law that you've chosen. If you do, that championship banner will be raised for you in the community you call home, and it will be a better place. Thank you, and I'll look forward to welcoming you all to the park.